How are we doing folks? Jimmy from Jimmy Talks Tech here. We're doing a video talking about the update from Blackmagic that came out a month or so ago. It's 9.5, I think it's up to 9.51 or 9.52 now. Uh, there was a few key features in this, the main one being that with uh, this update on the Blackmagic software, you could change the webcam output as well as the two HDMI video outputs. Now this is a this is quite a significant update for the type of type of shoots and the type of live streams that I do, especially if you do virtual streams and virtual hybrid events. Now let me let me kind of explain uh, in a little bit more detail what I mean by that. I'll throw up a picture of the of the studio that I'm in just now, but generally speaking, uh, there's a podcast happening, and you've got one person in the studio and one person on Zoom. So if I cut to the uh, the wide shot here, normally you'd have a person on the uh, on the on the left hand side and you would have a person on the right hand side. However, sometimes the guest on the show comes in virtually. So we forgo the wide shot and we just go from the uh, single shot of our host, which would be this shot and then the single shot of the person coming in on on zoom or teams or you know webex or whatever which for the purposes of this video would be me now that chat would happen and we would cut between the guest and the host the host being uh you know um, sharks hockey jersey so guest host guest host sometimes we would cut to a, a super source of them both and that's how I would mix the show, uh, whether we're broadcasting live to YouTube or whether we're just recording for a future upload. That's how the show would be mixed. Now, the problem that I would run into with that is the return feed for the Zoom participant would be the program feed of the recording or of the stream. So if I cut to the super source, what the person on Zoom sees is the super source. If I cut to the person on Zoom i.e. me, what that person would see would be themselves. So there was a few different workarounds that, uh, that we used to do for that. One of the simple ones was to take the second HDMI out of the, uh, of the ATEM Extreme and feed that back into Zoom with a, like an Elgato capture dongle or any kind of capture dongle rather than the, act, rather than the, the, the webcam output of the ATEM Extreme. However, that output is already being used to feed, if I can just show you here, the telly there. So that's, uh, that's so that the person or host who sits in, that's so that the host who sits in that chair there can see the Zoom participant there. So the second HDMI output was already getting used. The, main, the first HDMI output was getting used for the multi-view. So both HDMI outputs were in use. This update from Blackmagic allows us to, cut to that screen there, change the output of the webcam to not just be the program, but any camera we want. So that means I can change the webcam output to be a dedicated feed of camera three, which is our host. So, what that means is our guest on Zoom will only see camera three, which is our host, as opposed to what they previously would see, which would be the program feed, which sometimes would be the host, sometimes it would be the host, sometimes it would be themselves, sometimes it would be the, the super source or the picture in picture, the, you know, the side by side. So, the update from Blackmagic uh, the 9.5, or as I said, it's 9.51 or 9.52 by now. That update, small as it may seem, actually makes a huge difference to this type of shoot because, to recap, if I cut to uh, the wide angle here, so the host is in this chair. The host is looking at the virtual participant on the TV there, which is taking up one HDMI. The second HDMI is in use with the multi-view, which is just off screen here. So there was no more HDMIs to, uh, to feed Zoom. Now, 
we can feed Zoom with a dedicated camera uh, rather than the program feed, which just makes it a, a smoother you know experience for the for the virtual participant, whether it's Zoom, WebEx, uh, Teams, FaceTime, anything like that. Being able to choose the output that Zoom sees rather than just the program feed is quite a big update. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, a quick video on how I'm using the update from Blackmagic of choosing the webcam feed from the ATM Extreme. Uh, I'll put a list of the uh, specific models that it works with, but I'm pretty sure it works with all apart from the very basic ATM Minis. So the ATM Mini and the ATM Mini SDI, it doesn't work for them, but I think it does work for the rest of them. But I'll put a link in the description below that explains you know, the models it does and doesn't work with. Hope that all made sense. Uh, if there's any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video.